Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. On today's episode of the Designers Now Founders series, we will be having Victor of Ford Canvas talk on the topic designer's value. As you listen, enjoy. As a designer, you need to be able to accept that you are wrong. Oftentimes, you will be. You need to be able to start something on this route, abandon that route, start all over again on that route. You need to be less attached to things or to ideas or to methods because and it will be easier for you to be less attached to ideas when you realize that there are millions of them. You know? Any you want more thing you should watch out for in terms of red flags for yourself. Um, if you are the kind of person who who tries to be, maybe you have an idea that came to your mind and you are being super secretive about it. If you want to mention to anybody, you're asking, to, you're asking them to sign NDAs and then you are planning that somebody will see your idea. It is this quote I wrote on my Facebook probably seven years ago. Is it seven or five? I said, don't be scared of anybody stealing your idea. Focus on the mind that created that idea. There's a long list of people. Steve Jobs founded Apple and then invented the iPod and then the iPhone and then revolutionized the music industry with iTunes and then uh, co-founded Pizza that up until today continues to eat animation, you know, in collaboration with Disney. Uh, it, none of those ideas, uh, what's the name, Richard Branson started with, Richard Branson's core business was the music label, signing artists, records, and then went into, had the fitness business, and then went into airlines, and then right now has a, a, something in space, and then something deep down waters, and then has something about conflict resolution globally. None of these revolutionaries, Leno Da Vinci has innovations in, in you know him, you know it for his painting. So he has innovations in architecture, he came up with a very unique bridge design, I think, that revolutionized something about building bridges. The revolutionary thinkers were never about one particular idea. The point is, as a designer, you need to keep a, you can't hold the word to your chest. Let's put it that way. You need to be a freer person, you know? You need to, of course, there are different personality types. All kinds of people can make designers. But to be honest, you need to have some bit of openness. Because sometimes, let me, let me give you this example. And as first class level, there are times when a client comes with a suggestion. Our first reaction, of course, we won't show them, but our first true reaction is, ah, you guys, you really don't know what you're saying. But like, this thing you guys are saying is wrong. There have been a few cases where we don't try it out and we're like, fuck it, it actually worked. In fact, we're like, this is actually better, this is better than where we're coming from, to be honest. Which, of course, we still tweak it, you know, we still, whatever other thing is, we still prevent some things, but we have been humbled with a lot of experiences like that, where something um, opposes what you have always thought it should be like, and then you try to be like, huh? Ah. But there's a kind of perspective you will have that one, you fight trying that thing out. Secondly, even after you have tried it out, your mind is so stuck on what you think that you won't even see the beauty of what you have just created. You would justify yourself that uh, she may accept so. Of course, sometimes you'll be right. That after doing something you said should not be done, it's still like shit. But you need to keep an open mind to identify when actually, even though you were sweating it since morning, you were actually wrong. Because you can't create that without that. You can't you can't stomp up on ideas. A lot of ideas start from so I mean I think my secondary school also helped me. So we studied, I don't know, um I don't, I don't think every school, every school has studied, but we had a course, a subject called Fine Art. If you are, please, you can tell me how many minutes more I have in chat. Because I have a lot, I mean, I can keep going tonight. night. Uh, of course, I don't. <laughs> There's this, so we had a, a, a course um, called uh, Fine Art. So, so if you remember the way curriculum was written in secondary school, at least, the way it was for me in my states, I'll show you 
every subject had this thing where when you start a subject, there will be things like, okay, significance of this subject. Um, I've forgotten the terminologies. But there will be a number of one, two, three things that each have like five, six points on that. And that's part of like the most difficult part of you preparing for your exam because you don't know which one they will ask. They can ask you the importance of this subject society, the purpose, you know, those things that when you start a course outline, all those or aims and objectives, stuff like that. So, yeah, I think it's about your objectives, objectives of finance, of studying finance. Um, one of the things they said was, I can remember one of the points was to, to create an appreciation of art. In, in you know maybe in society or in people or the students and and that really stayed with me because this is talking about openness again you can be criticism is good but if all you do is criticize again it's very far for you as a designer that you need to work on you need to be able to appreciate things not necessarily because you would yeah. like you can look at your design and think to yourself okay i would have done this differently but you are paying attention enough to appreciate what the designer has done right. Do you understand? You also realize that, okay, I may not agree with this color combination, but I mean, you're more interested in understanding why they chose it. And you're also able to look at it and oh, it's actually not that bad. Even though that's not how I would have done it. You get that kind of stuff. So you need to embrace, have, you can't all be critical. You need to be appreciative. It helps you to open, keep your own mind open more. One of the things that my final teacher taught me, and I can't also forget, is he said every mistake in art is a design. But if you're not open-minded enough, this is me adding this now. When your watercolor spews on your white A2 sheets, you're going to start crying, and you're going to be sad, and you're going to feel terrible. You're going to think like the world has come to an end. Then you're going to think you're failed. But thanks to all my teacher taught me, if your watercolors splashes on your white paper, you draw an outline entirely around the entire splash, and you've created a unique abstract shape. Or you paint something with it, you, you suddenly change the direction of what you wanted to paint, such that the splash forms a part of an animal that you have now decided that you are going to draw. It takes a great level of openness and flexibility for you to be able to do that. To see failure and be like, okay, okay, okay. Well, there's another way we look at this thing and it's not failure. You understand? That keeps you. So if 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 in an ideal situation, if you if you groom yourself well, the value you should add to a team, any team you join. It should be more than your ability to create beautiful designs. You should be a valuable, valuable team member. Because do you know why the design thinking process was created? The design thinking process is now used for all things, even in engineering companies. Like design thinking applies to anything you're trying to do. But do you know why it's called design thinking? Someone studied how designers think, broke it into processes, and used it to teach non-designers to be able to make and create better things. There's a let's, let's say, and when you look at what's inside design thinking. You're seeing a lot of divergence, no rules at the beginning, diverge, no stupid ideas, and then converge. And as you're converging, you're prototyping. So you're prototyping, you are very, very quick to kill some ideas. If like you're not attached to any idea, you're willing to test many ideas and check, like there's no attachment in the in the thinking of a designer. Now, I said if you join a team. You should be a valuable to remember more than you're going to be able to create beautiful looking designs. That's also why, if you groom yourself right as a designer, it's easier for you to start your own company. Again, this series says designers turn founders. I hope you guys realize that this is beyond designers turning founders of agencies. What the next generation of transformations or switches I want to see and that we should be seeing. Is designers turning into founders of companies like Piggyvest, like founders of products, founders of even health innovation, founders of even logistics companies, founders of even food chains? Because if you are fully tapped into your into your designer self, you are already several miles ahead of the typical entrepreneur.
because the way you see things, the way you view things is going to be different. So obviously, transforming to become, to found an agency is also great. So you then bring, and what you do like I do is that design thinking, right? That systemic approach of why you're creating those designs. You now have to apply it to what you call system design, but ignore the terms. But essentially what I'm saying is you now have to apply it to setting up or building or laying out your business, you know? But my point is, if you fully tap into your creative self, there is a lot of advantage you should give your mindset, you should give your, and it affects how you then deal with your staff. You're more open-minded with ideation, you're more open-minded with dealing with clients, you, you, there's a lot of soft skills that if you're doing it right, you develop as a designer that if you decide to be an entrepreneur, it should come easily. And again, when you're trying to design, one of the things you do is you, you're you trying to identify, you're being open to the fact that okay, there's an advantage, there's a disadvantage. You have everything you're trying to do, you're trying to identify okay, there's disadvantages. You, you want to maximize the advantages, you want to um, um, minimize the effect of disadvantages, right? See how I apply this in my business. When I was starting out, I, I was very, very, very honest and humble with my strengths and my weaknesses. And that's why I brought my co-founder. When I found him, it was very easy for me. I think I started the conversation of saying he should be a co-founder, right? Because I was easy, it was easy for me to see that, okay, this structural discipline is what I don't have. And that's exactly what this person has. What I have is the creative, innovative juice, which at that time, this person did not have, right? So it was a perfect combination. But if you're not thinking like a designer, if you're just fixed on a particular way, you will tell yourself, oh, I should be able to do this. Um, I own this business. I'm not sharing with anybody. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a way you see things. There's a way you handle stuff, your, your, your people. There's a way you would handle your clients that if you had fully tapped into your value as a designer, those things should be better done. So, if a designer is running a business, it should be different. You should see it in their openness, in their flexible approach, in their continuous iteration, in their continuous improvement, in their, in their uh, ability to, of course, communicate right and get perception right, because obviously that's what they're doing for other people, right? So. And design should play should should be a priority in what they're doing. Design should 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 take a good seat in their business. And design and that's extremely important because it means that people would have better experiences. People would also expect better experiences. Let me just summarize this last part before I take questions. I hope you don't know the difference between the two things I just said now. In fact, what I said now is really what differentiates um, is a big differentiating factor between product design and graphic design, even though everything is graphic design, but let's, let's, for the sake of communication right now. I said, people would have better experiences and people would expect to have better experiences. They're two different things. You know, when you are gaining function or aesthetic, this is also where it comes to play. The design of, if, I enter, if you enter a building and it's easy for you to find the, the restroom, you don't like, you, let's even say you're alone, you could easily, find your way to the back, to the veranda, and you could find your way back and and the, the the walkways are not too dark, the design lights can come in so you don't get to trip. Uh, there's enough air to come into the windows, see if it's not air conditioned. The colors, you know, the chairs are comfortable to sit on, the tiles are not too slippery if your leg is wet. That's functional excellence. That's also a designer's work. It's a designer's work on navigation in a product, for example. It's a designer's work in an ad for people to find what they need immediately and very quickly. It's a designer's work for the message to be passed across. But the second thing I said was that, also is that, that users or people expect to have good experiences. So there is the reality and there is perception. And designers can influence both. Product designers, do a lot more on the reality because when I hold WhatsApp or I hold a product in my hand, I am like it's here right now. And let's say it's carried as a piggy vest or fond on, I am trying to do a transfer. That's my reality now, and I want it to be smooth, right? 
But we, and, and that's a very important, very important component of business work. The perception comes in place more when you're thinking about the logo, you're thinking about the ads and the marketing. Because at my first interaction with the company's outlook, I have no idea if the reality of that company is great. But it helps me. It's a good feeling for me and it serves the company's interest right that from afar, I could guess or assume that my experience and my reality with them would be great. And if I didn't have all of that perception, if my mind did not have something to expect, if all of that, you know, um, the, 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 that part of the work is absent, I may experience that reality and rate it 6 over 10. But it's different when I was expecting, I already was like, ah, this is going to be good. The reality just becomes a confirmation of something I already concluded upon. A service I would have rated 6 over 10, now I may rate it 7 over 10, or even 8. Because now, the psychological part of me has, has joined. Have you ever seen an argument before where, I don't know if I'm anyone has experienced this, Someone is arguing, someone is making a point. Um, about to say something to support their point. As I say it, sometimes they didn't even hear what I said. But they're like, yes, uh-huh, exactly, that's what I was saying now. Because they could see from the tone that I'm about to support them, and it doesn't matter what I said. I didn't even get what I'm saying. So if you an average experience can seem like a great experience because of several other psychological, what people, some business people call secondary factors, they will say it's not so important. But they realize that if you had been told, for example, that a service is terrible, even if you go in, like, let someone tell you, it's like food. If I tell you that our restaurants, ah, nah, that food is terrible. And on a particular afternoon, it's the only restaurant that opened, but you are so hungry that you have to eat it. If that food is actually 5 over 10, it will taste like 3.5 over 10 in your mouth. Fat. Now, if that food is 10 over 10, it will taste like 8. 8 is still great, isn't it? So I'm not saying that because someone says something is bad, when you go there, it's going to be bad. I'm saying that the part of someone is going to be bad is 100% of the time going to have an effect on your perception of your experience. Facts only. Like I said, it is still great. So, people who say things like, oh, brand, reputation, or any of don't matter, it's just the products, quality. Well, if they keep it at 10, it's fine. People will experience that's 8. If they keep it at 8, people will experience that 6. So, they didn't lose. But, isn't it better that the reality is 8 and people can experience that's 10? Or reality is 6 and people that's as eight, as of what you're doing as a designer when you are, you know, on that brand marketing side. When you're on the product side, you're very much closer to the reality, but also with a bit of that side as well, because in your choice of the colors and the, 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 the almost opening it up and it's just feeling right. It's already a lot of mental um, effect. So, summarily, um, nothing is fixed and every other project or task or challenge is peculiar and the moment you start to see the world in that way and you start to rely less on templates and even when you use templates you know that maybe you need to move faster but you understand why those things templated have been templated and are trying to see how you can tweak that template to achieve your purpose to, to solve the peculiarity of the project right ahead of you. You may just start to treat projects that way and you start to connect to the impact that your work can have on what you're creating, on, on the bigger scope of things. You, 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 can, you, you, you can successfully take up your value as a designer and the, there's no 10 over 10 in this case. It never really ends. You're on the continuous journey, but you want to be sure that you are on that journey, you're moving in the right direction. 
and you're not staying in one position and you're not moving backwards. Um, yeah, I hope you guys got one out of this. So, questions. Good evening, Victor. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, so um, I'm currently five months into product design with Axel's Design School. And I really want to ask, the intermediate class will be over in a few weeks. And I really want to ask, what and what should we watch out for as a beginner while growing? Because it, it seems to be that there are so many designers out there and there's a lot of competition and it like kind of scares me that oh there are so many people out doing this thing is there what can i do to be different what should i do what should i read what should i learn who should i talk to so is there anything like what and what you watch out for while growing and secondly like some weeks back someone contacted me that oh that Wait, hold on. Hold okay. on. Let me just answer the question. Okay. So, um, watch out for. Watch out for. Being. How do I explain this? Never stop being a work in progress. Watch out for trying to arrive. Like, watch out for trying to reach a point where you have arrived. Rather take the perspective that there's no. Abandon the concept of arriving. And focus more on the fact that whatever level you are, whether it's at the beginning level or at the senior design level, it's a continuous point of growth and because if they are 10 times better than you, there are people who are 10 times better than them, like there's no point. Like, that means if you switch seats with them right now, there will still be people who are 10 times better than you, there's no point. So watch out for that. And the specific issue that you mentioned of uh, feeling like you are not to that way, let me announce to you that there are, if there are 100,000 product designers, there are about a million job openings or clients' needs for product design. And the same probably applies to uh, brand design. I mean, at the moment, um, the ratio will be greater on product design. There will be more clients chasing the ability to do. But that is changing around. Um, but to be honest, if we're, if we're looking at clients who need great work, good work, and designers who can do good work, or who are pushing very hard to be able to do good work, the, the ratio, the clients are way, 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 way designers. No matter how many designers you see around you, every day, every time you hear about this company just raised $3.5 million, you need to know that even if that company had just one product before, now they're trying to do it one more product. And each product is now having extensions. Now they're having designers. What are we as probably about 20, about 15 to 20 designers? Yeah, and that's yeah. Um, because there's always like just one section of the work, like some designers are focused on just say this particular gate gateway. Some are focused on fitting this particular. Uh, you know, you might see you see one side of the product. There are several sides that merchants are dealing with. There are several sides that are different. Like my point is, it's expansive. It's a very huge market of need. And now I'm telling you that there are more needs than designers, right? But one more thing I'm not told you is that per time, there's like a top 10, 20 percent of all designers who really, 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 really know what they're doing, and the Big and highest paying companies are specifically in search for them. So they can have a job opening, interview 10 people, and not hire any. Because this is what they're looking for. So the only way, no matter if all your secondary school old students, classmates, all decide to be product designers today, if everybody around you becomes product designers today, we need to know that. You are not in competition with everybody or with the majority if you are growing every day. Because there's a top echelon, there's a kind of designer that these companies are looking for. And no matter how many designers you see around you, that kind of designer is a very rare commodity. So you have no business at all. Like, you don't even have to pray, you don't need a miracle. 
like to be very honest that's, that's something I've, I, I, I I don't know how to explain it in this country if you take your journey as a designer seriously you don't need prayer to succeed you don't need you, you know what you can use design to be able to 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 be even more successful like maybe you you in, in five years you you'll be earning a million naira a month on a normal day or in three years time you be earning a million naira a month on a normal day or maybe we now favor or prayers or something to thank God especially for suddenly you're actually earning three times what you should be earning right but I'm saying minimum viable like minimum basic you don't need to be lucky like that's how that's how that's how it is like if you are good you will be successful and the only way to be good is that every day you have to push to improve yourself so don't don't you have no you have no crowd confusion to be scared of Exactly. Well, All right, thank you. you. Thank you. So my my second question is about pricing. I'm waiting to ask for that question about the question right now. And uh, as a beginner, people would feel that okay, you are just starting, so why should you charge so much? And sometimes when I see the project they bring, it's so like ah, oh, this is a big project, man. But I have to charge. But they be like. You are just starting. Come on, you are a beginner in this thing. I shouldn't expect to charge so much. So, what what do you think we can actually push to them that will make them, you know, pay? whatever that much you are charging? Do you you are you are you are at peace with that amount yourself, right? Yes. Not overcharging, oh. not undercharging. Okay. Um, and then we say you're a beginner. Um, if I was you, I would say. Actually, that's how much I estimate my work. I appreciate your advice, and I will fully understand if you can't proceed with me. Um, but I, I mean, you, you cannot make promise about. You can stress how much effort you put into developing your capacity. Such that why they may see you as a beginner, there is there is a certain kind of impact that you will still be able to make on their businesses. And to be honest, that amount you're asking for is nothing compared to um, how much you how much you already want. You know, given by how much you put into it. I'm not asking you to go specific and talk about cost of gain or any of those things that some people talk about. As a designer, you're, you can't be defending your costs with uh, gain money or money for food or how much you can earn after all. It's a very second thing. Focus, speak intellectually. Speak more about your mind, how much you invest, how much you intentionality. Of course, you can mention those resources, but on the side, not as your main point. So, but speak to them in a way that they know that you're not desperate to retain their business. People talk to you that way. First thing they assume in their mind is that maybe you are still young now, you need this money now. Why are you talking and see if you're ready then? Then shock them by like giving them the kind of response where they realize that actually, if I don't take your work, it just gives me more hours to read more. I have some courses I'm not going And you're not being proud though. So, but that you have like, you have decided that when you are working, this is the price that comes with it. But you understand fully if they don't think you are worth that. That they are wrong, but you, you can't convince them. Like you may not always convince them. That attitude is strong. I can assure you. That still is a very, very um, strong response. That, that situation. And some of them I walk away. But I'm telling you, they are coming back. In one or two weeks time. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you very much. Yes. God bless you. Yes.